Welcome to Morbid Book Reviews, where an evangelical encounters the restoration. I'm your host, Stephen Peinecker, and back by popular demand, it's become an annual tradition to do the Book of Mormon rally in Independence, Missouri. And joining us for the third year for Patrick and the second year in a row for Casey, Patrick McKay and Casey Griffiths, welcome to the program today. Thank, Thank you. you. Good to be here. Great to be here. Right. So I just wanted to say, folks, that this year, April 20th, now, of course, we got the April 19th Symposium of the Book of Mormon. And then on Saturday, April 20th, will be the Book of Mormon Rally, in which I will be speaking at on Saturday. I'm actually going to be flying into uh, Kansas City Saturday morning. So unfortunately, this year, I will not be able to participate in the Interfaith Forum. Uh, but uh, but I'm excited about participating in the Book of Mormon rally. And I'll, before we get started, I actually want to do a little quick screen share for everybody so you can kind of get the lowdown on what's going on here. So here we have the Book of Mormon Symposium. It's The venue is Good Shepherd Community of Christ, 4341 Blue Ridge Boulevard in Independence, Missouri. And that's, and that's, that's the 19th and the 20th. And then I just want to remind everybody as well, and there's my mom with a beautiful painting she received in the mail the other day that I want to also tell people that I will be speaking at Rob Meldrum's Firm Foundation Conference um, on April 18th. And that's going to be uh, 18th, and that's going to be in Sandy, Utah. And so that's the deal with that. So I just want to let everybody know that I'm flying into Utah on April 16th, and then I'm flying into Kansas City on the 20th. Long-winded introduction, but I want to give people my itinerary. Also, hopefully we'll be doing a meetup Wednesday the 17th somewhere in the valley. So if you want a more intimate affair, um, I will definitely usually get about 20, 30 people to my meetups whenever we have them. So I'm looking forward to seeing all my homies in both both Zions, the Utah Zion and the Missouri Zion. Patrick McKay, you're my homie. We've been coming on my show for a long time. How are you doing today? I'm doing great. And it's really a pleasure to see you again, Steve, in this in this format. And you too, Casey. This is this has become an annual event. I appreciate it. Thanks for yes, the chance absolutely. to talk and about actually, it. I love sharing an, two annual events with with Patrick because every year I go out to the Book of Mormon rally and speak, and also have him come on the program to talk about it. But we also have you come on every Thanksgiving season to talk about a Latter Day Thanksgiving. Look for our fourth annual one coming up this November. Casey Griffiths. Uh, now this is what's so cool. This is a really great collaboration. So you have Patrick, who's tied in with the Independent Restoration Movement. Uh, you know, kind of the uh, old school RLDS, if you will, in one sense, uh, and, and uh, you know, not that's kind of a little different than the community of Christ. And you have uh, Casey, who is at BYU, and you could say you kind of have a calling to do interfaith work, especially within the different restoration branches. Is that correct, sir? Yeah, I love the restoration branches, and they're just good people. And I love people that love the Book of Mormon, you know, so I love you, Steve, and everybody else that's interested in the restoration. I'm just interested in building bridges with them. And and one of the best bridge builders I know is, is Patrick McKay. So it's a, it's a pleasure and it's an honor to be part of this. Now, I wanted to ask you, Patrick, what was, what gave you the idea to do a Book of Mormon rally slash symposium in the first place? And maybe just talk about how it's progressed in the years since. Well, initially, we had just a Book of Mormon symposium. It was a two-night event. We would have four uh, presentations from BYU professors and then four presentations from people from other parts of the Restoration. And then because of the pandemic, uh, everything halted. So toward the end of the pandemic, we knew we couldn't get the professors out, but we created a Bring Your Book of Mormon to Work in School Day. And that was pretty successful. One of the professors, Keith Wilson, came out uh, as an individual and shared with me in that venue. Then the next year, we still didn't have the uh, the COVID restrictions lifted, but we went ahead and, and created a Book of Mormon rally. And this was uh, an event that we said it was a, a little less traditional. It wasn't a, a suit and tie kind of event. It wasn't like a church service, but it had church uh, trappings to it. We prayed. We testified of the Book of Mormon, we sang, and we wanted to excite people about the message of the book, and we decided to open it up to people who were not necessarily a part of the Restoration, but who had encountered it. We had a Baptist minister come who said the book was more Baptist than the Baptist hymnal. We had an evangelical uh, who encountered Mormonism, Steve Pinecker, and he said the Book of Mormon saved his life. We had David Bose, who had visited 52 churches in 52 weeks, and 
several of those churches were connected to the restoration. And he said, I didn't know about Joseph Smith. I didn't know about the Book of Mormon, but I went to their churches and I discovered something special, unique about these people, and they piked his interest. And so the Book of Mormon, uh, and we had a Catholic priest come and say he used the Book of Mormon during Mass. And so we've tried to let the world know that the Book of Mormon is bigger than just the, the RLDS church or the LDS church. Uh, it's like the Bible. Anybody who believes in the Bible, that book belongs to them. And anyone who's received a witness of the divine authenticity of the Book of Mormon is an inheritor of its promises. So that's kind of the venue, the idea, the thought behind it. And we just want to stimulate people's interest in the book and let people know that uh, God is on the move, okay. that he's going to make bear his arm. And this book is going to testify of Christ and his promises to be fulfilled in the latter days. So, Casey, of course, you're uh, you're best known for being with uh, Scripture Central and the work you do there. And I just wanted to ask you, you know, because I guess you're going to be interviewing a lot of different people uh, for Scripture Central during that weekend. And, and you know, what I, I, I kind of want to ask you, what got you interested in doing like interfaith, intrafaith, if you will, with different branches of the Restoration? Was that something that you were you interested in these groups growing up or was this something you just kind of ran into it and thought, oh, oh my gosh, I got it. I mean, talk a little bit about that background. I mean, I'm a very traditional Utah Mormon, I guess you'd say. <laughs> the town I grew up in was 90% Latter-day Saint. Uh, you were weird if you weren't a member of the church. Um, but early on, I went to Independence. So it was actually my trip to Zion. And if you walk around downtown Independence, you'll see the Community of Christ Temple. And then across the street, you'll see the Church of Christ Hendrickite. You'll see the Remnant Church. Um, then you drive around Independence and you see all kinds of churches that believe in the Book of Mormon or have variations on the name. And that just fascinated me. And so uh, right when I got to BYU, I started looking for ways to sort of immerse myself in that community. Keith Wilson was a big mentor to me. And he invited me to come to this conference, I think for the first time, maybe back in 2015 or 2016. And I've just gone every year since because I love my brothers and sisters of the restoration. And independence is a great place where you can use that term, the restoration. And it means a lot of different branches of the faith, um, not just the, the Utah church that I grew up in. You know, what I also love about independence in particular is it's really it's one of the few places in which the Bible Belt and the Restoration converge. Mm -hmm. And I find interesting cross-pollinizations going on, in particular with Pentecostal or charismatic-leaning Christians who've kind of, you know, who've introduced themselves to me at these Book of Mormon rallies. And, and so what that's another aspect that I find interesting is that my world is going to kind of been brought into this, whether it was just me or Lynn Reidenhauer or others, but there's also people sitting in the audience that are spirit-filled Christians who consider fellow believers of the Book of Mormon to be brothers and sisters in Christ in many ways. And what's so interesting is, you know, of course, Dr. Uh, Dr. Christopher Thomas, of uh, who wrote the book, A Pentecostal Reads the Book of Mormon, um, you know, he's he says, you know, I read the Book of Mormon, and he says there's something very familiar to it to me. And, and so I think that in particular, the Book of Mormon resonates with people from the more spirit-filled Pentecostal persuasion. Patrick, maybe to speak to that, maybe your experiences. I know that there's one uh, who's a, a bigger tonight who, who does some work for a Christian ministry and independence or did, but maybe just talk about maybe your experiences with people that are more like Lynn Reidenhauer and others that are what we would term spirit-filled Christians in our camp who've engaged the Book of Mormon. Well, in Christianity, you have a, a view that they protested the Roman church. They were called Protestants or they remonstrated and they replaced the by the, the papacy with the Bible. The, the papacy was considered inerrant. So the Bible became the inerrant word of God. And, and so that's a very strong uh, idea that runs through uh, Protestant Christianity. And then on, on there's a, an element of Protestant Christianity, like the assembly of God, like the Pentecostals who believe God still speaks today, that he still reveals himself, that they, they believe in the gifts of the Spirit. And that's part and parcel of what the Latter-day Saint movement believes in. We believe God continues to speak. We believe in dreams and visions, prophecies, hear, healings and miracles. And so it's tailor-made for people who accept the Bible's word of God, believe that God is still alive and he still speaks. And they find that there's a, 
there's a, a common mooring that that weaves us together because we believe that God is not static, but that he continues to reveal himself. And so I think it's created a, a healthy relationship. And people like Lynn Ridenauer, for instance, who was a Baptist minister, um, and he's he's a Pentecostal type of Baptist minister, you know, and and he's tried to bridge that gap. And, and he's brought many people to some of these events. And and I think that it's just been real healthy because um, a lot of people just reject the book, uh, having never read it. And the Book of Mormon is pretty clear that it, it's a testimony of Christ. And the Bible says every spirit that testifies that Jesus come in the flesh is of God. So really, Stephen, a lot of problems people have with the Book of Mormon, it isn't that isn't the problem. The problem is they don't believe their own Bible. Their own Bible says that every spirit that testifies, and we have 2,500 witnesses, men, women, and children, who touched the Savior's hands and his side when he appeared to the peoples in the Americas, the other sheep of John 10, 16 that he references. And so that's a winning message for people who believe they're spirit-filled, who want to have a personal encounter with Jesus Christ, not just believe in his word, but believe that word still speaks today. Hmm. I love it. I love it, Patrick. You know, and of course, I get quite a few, as my channel and my visibility has continued to grow, um, I've been getting a lot more people coming out of the woodwork, in particular from my camp, that have started attacking this endeavor. And my whole thing is, is that, you know, and I, and I, I fully knew that this would happen, right? This is, they could, they can't ignore me anymore. And that's fine. And I, I love them and I consider them Christians, but I just feel like the problem I have is that the spirit they have for people who are believers in the Book of Mormon can be downright cruel sometimes and un, and and just not very Christ-like. And what I'm trying to do is break down these barriers that we have and say, listen, there are, there are certain places we can have conversations, our communities can have conversations. One, is that April 6th, 1830 service that was a room full or a, a assembly of born again, spirit filled Christians. Them's my people. And then we can also have the conversation within the pages of the Book of Mormon, which shares a lot of the doctrine and the teachings that many Protestants, especially those of the spirit filled variety, would resonate with. And I'm like, why would we look at the Book of Mormon as anything but a friend, a bridge builder to our communities? And and maybe speak to that, Casey. Just the important message of the of the Book of Mormon and how it's not an anti-Christian book. Um, it's 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 definitely a, a message that uh, Jesus is at the very center of the core of the Book of Mormon. And and not only that, but it's it's at the very center is the anti-Nephi-Lehite story, right? Which is which is the principles of the Prince of Peace that are being exhibited at the very center of the book, as demonstrated by Christopher Thomas. Do maybe speak to the message of the Book of Mormon, Casey? Yeah, the Book of Mormon is an incredibly Christ-centered book, and uh, I love the Bible. I study the Bible. I cherish it. Uh, the Book of Mormon mentions Christ on almost every page. A couple of years ago, a scholar from our church named Susan Easton Black did a study, 6,607 verses in the entire Book of Mormon, 3,925 have some kind of reference to Jesus Christ. So from the very first verse where it says, I, Nephi, having been highly favored of the Lord, the Lord is Christ, to the last verse where Moroni says, I will meet you before the pleasing bar of the great Jehovah, Jehovah's Christ. Um, the whole book is centered around Christ, where the prophets in there teach of Christ and preach of Christ and rejoice in Christ. And that's the message that um, the book shares to me is that the Book of Mormon has augmented my testimony of the Bible. It's helped me understand it a little bit better. And it's helped me see in the mouth of two or three witnesses, God establishes his word, uh, just like Paul taught. And so I love the Book of Mormon. I love the Bible. I love the varieties of Mormons that we see come out at this rally from uh, my branch, which is um, pretty, <laughs> we're pretty buttoned down low key to uh, the Church of Jesus Christ bicker tonight, who are very Pentecostal, very spirit-filled. I love those people. A couple of them came to BYU a few weeks ago, and uh, we sang songs. They sang songs with 800 students here at BYU. We had a blast just celebrating and worshiping the Savior. And then deep relationships like the ones I've developed with Patrick and Jim. Uh, Jim is Patrick's brother. 
where we've been able to share our faith in Christ and offer resources uh, to help each other. So honestly, I think anybody that picks up the Book of Mormon will see that it's not a threat to Christianity. In fact, it's an asset, something that helps bring us together. And in the Restoration family, it's uh, one thing that I think we can all still agree on. Every branch of the Restoration loves and celebrates the Book of Mormon with only a few exceptions to that. Mm, yes, that's that is so true. And yeah, and and you know, and I think that's the key thing. You know, Patrick, I just want you to maybe uh preview some of the speakers who are going to be speaking at the symposium as well as at the rally. Just you don't have to give all the names, but just give us a few few highlights of some of the people that will be speaking. Okay, at the Book of Mormon Symposium, which is on Friday night, we have four speakers. We have two BYU professors. Um, we have Stefan Tager. Uh, I still don't know his topic, Casey. You haven't sent his topic, but <laughs> we're looking for that. And I'll, then uh, I'll, Scott I'll Woodward is also going to talk about uh, the Book of Mormon. And then we have an individual who has been in the community of Christ, but actually has met in the uh, Native American part of the community of Christ, a strong Book of Mormon believer, Richard Roop. He's going to talk about the Book of Mormon being our Liahona, both individually and collectively. Then I'm going to talk about uh, our genetic diversity and the restoration of the restoration. Then on Saturday night, we're going to have our rally, and Casey's going to teach a class. And I think he's going to talk a little bit about how the Church of the Lamb of God might have a little bit broader appeal than, than uh, some of us have considered. We're also going to have an exercise where everybody in the room is going to read the first and second book of Nephi all at the same time. We're going to have the whole book read in about five minutes. And that's going to be a miracle, and you're going to see how that unfolds. Uh, you're going to be invited to speak, Stephen, uh, an evangelical who encounters the Book of Mormon. Stephen, uh, let's see, uh, David Boyce is going to return. Uh, we're going to have Josh Gailey, who's an uh, evangelist in the Church of Jesus Christ, Bicker tonight. Uh, Becky Tarbuck, whose mother uh, received 239 songs. She received the song, The Angel Moroni is Coming Again. And she's going to talk about that and the experience their particular family had with Angel Moroni. You know, in, in the early restoration, uh, Joseph Smith's family was intimately connected as the work unfolded, just a small family. And in Becky's family, uh, Angel Moroni appeared to several individuals in her family, and it, it proffered an event that would lead to her mother having this gift. No musical ability, no poetic ability, and yet she received 239 poetic and prophetic songs about Zion. We have a young man from Lamona, Iowa. He's going to talk about the hope he finds in Christ because of the Book of Mormon. We're going to have a little bit of music that's going to be stimulating and a little more upbeat. Uh, we're going to have a, a, a scholar uh, who has going to bring Book of Mormon first editions of the various churches that they publish through the years. Uh, we're going to have John Hycheck, the only Strangite that I know, is going to come and bear his witness to the Book of Mormon. He's going to bring some original artifact that we're all going to be able to get our hands around. And so these are the kind of individuals that will be there. And there's some others, and it's just going to be a, a dynamic, unfolding, quick movie. Nobody gets to speak very long except me. Um, you know, I'll introduce and close it, but everybody gets 10 or 12 minutes. And But it's impactful because it's quick, it's moving, and we can see how the Book of Mormon has impacted various people in various settings, and it stimulates, encourages, and prepares us to receive a greater revelation, which is to come. So we're excited about it. Well, Casey, it's, it's a I'm, dynamic event. I'm going to ask you, Casey, if you don't mind maybe previewing a little bit here. So in the past, of course, you guys with the film crew from Book of Scripture Central have gone around and done some taping. I remember watching your stuff that you did last year. Are you guys plan have any special plans for doing special tapings this year? Yes, we are going to be running around like crazy. Uh, we're going to run up to Far West and try and visit... Uh, the grave of John Whitmer, one of the eight witnesses. We're going to go to the eight witnesses monument and also to the three witnesses monument and the day, the grave of David Whitmer. So 11 witnesses featured at the first, of the book of Mormon. And the video we're working on right now is to tell the story of those 11 witnesses and what their last words were. 
So David Whitmer, for instance, if you go and visit his grave, which is in Richmond, Missouri, chiseled into the headstone are the words, the record of the Jews and the record of the Nephites are one. Truth is eternal. And this is a guy who left uh, the Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints, who tried to unite with various movements, finally wound up starting his own church, who had no love lost between him and Joseph Smith, but insisted to his dying day that the Book of Mormon was true. And similar stories for all of the other 10 witnesses that we're going to tell. So we're going to be doing that. And then we're hoping to also uh, produce a video that will be distributed by Scripture Central that will highlight the testimonies of all these people from different branches of the Restoration. So we're going to have uh, Rebecca Devonis, who has a podcast on the Book of Mormon there, and she's going to be interviewing people uh, of various different traditions, uh, whether they're from Patrick's group, the JCRB, or from my group, or from the Church of Jesus Christ, or the Temple Lot Church talking about the Book of Mormon and their testimony of the Book of Mormon. So Scripture Central's um, really excited about this, and we'll have a full crew running around there. So we hope that even if you can't make it to Independence, you'll see these videos pop up in a couple months and get to appreciate some of the things we've been exploring, which is this rich diversity of belief in the restoration of the Book of Mormon. I think this evangelical should crash one of your episodes sometimes. You have a little fun. <laughs> if if you're there, we'll interview you, Steve. You know, I know you're used to being the interviewer, but we ought to get your story down a little bit. Sure. And I'd love to do that. That'd be awesome. Yeah, that. That'd be great. I would love that. So now I don't know what the plans are, but just so you know, David Boyce will also be speaking of 52 churches in 52 weeks. And our plan is maybe right now, we're going to maybe see about checking out the Temple Lot Church service that Sunday morning and then swing over to Patrick's for for lunch, what we're kind of thinking of doing. We'll see what happens with that. And I just want to say, Patrick, you know, uh, I want to thank you uh, for being a friend and being kind to the stranger that you didn't really know who I was when I first started this channel. And Casey, actually, what's so cool is you were one of the uh, early interviewer when we had you come on to talk about your book. And yeah. um, and so I just want to thank both of you for, you both been part of this almost since the very beginning. And I was just a tiny little channel with maybe 100, 150 subscribers. And you guys took the time to come on my show. And and I, I want to say, I always will have a soft spot for the people who were the who saw the vision early on of what Mormon book reviews would, would become. And I just want to honor both of you for one, being friends, and two, giving me the time of day when I was just this tiny little guy. Steve, I think you're doing an amazing work. And you used a word earlier that uh, you asked me if I felt called to this. I think I can see in you someone that's received a calling from God to act as a bridge between all these different groups. And I've got to compliment you because you come to this with no agenda and no um, no, no plan in mind. Um, you're flying by the seat of your pants, <laughs> but there's just a lot of, a lot of love and a desire to connect. And uh, I appreciate that. You know, we we're, we're used to being a little defensive and protective, uh, those of us that believe in the Book of Mormon. And you've just been so open and accepting that um, I think the Spirit of God works on people all over the place in a numerous ways to bring us all together. So grateful for you, brother. You know, Stephen, we have a prophecy that was delivered in 1917 through Albert A. Smith, the grandson of Joseph the Martyr. And he said the priesthood gathered at the Kirtland Temple and said that there are many forces at work in the world. You see but a part and the world sees them not at all. It's interesting in our dialogue with you, uh, you have created a venue where people that didn't know each other have begun to talk and interact and interface. And it's created all kinds of bridges and, and venues of discussion and fellowship and I believe that the, the hand of God is in that because the thing that holds us back is that we're unwilling to dialogue. People are unwilling to talk. And if we believe we have something that's worth sharing, then we ought to be able to sit down with one another, find common ground, and let God do the heavy lifting of those things we don't agree on. And so you've helped tear down some of those walls. And I'm so appreciative because I'm a bridge builder. That's why I wrote the book I wrote, Healing the Breach, Mormonism, Metaphors, and the Pieces of the Puzzle. I believe God is going to heal the breach in the restoration, and he's also going to heal the breach among all his people, and he's going to have a united people. In the Book of Mormon, there's a prophecy that 
uh, or a fulfillment of a prophecy where they no longer had any more ites. So in our day, no more Brighamites, Josephites, Hedrickites, Evangelicalites, but they were all one in Christ Jesus. So that's the goal. That's the impetus. And I think that we're on that path. Well, I want to share once again. Thank, thank you, thank you, Patrick. Well, thank you, Casey, for saying such kind words. Uh, the venue is Good Shepherd Community of Christ. On April 9th is the symposium, and April twentieth is the Book of Mormon rally. What what times do these both start at, uh, Patrick? Seven o'clock. Seven o'clock Central Time. I also want to remind people too that I do have the, my new YouTube channel called the Utah Interfaith Forum. And I have my new co-host, Monica, and I, we've taped about a half dozen episodes, and we're going to basically do like a monthly uh, thing where we're talking to various faith leaders in the state of Utah. And this is going to be the next really important project that we're going to be doing here at NBR. This was birthed out of, interestingly enough, the Utah Interfaith Forum was birthed out of the Facebook group by that name. And it was a faithful Latter-day Saint who uh, started this group. And then last September, this faithful saint handed me the group with over a thousand members. And I said, why are you giving me this group? And he says, well, we, uh, I just built a group modeling what you've been doing on your channel. So now we have, we're talking to Muslims and we're talking to Jewish people and we're talking to ethical atheists and we're talking to all different Buddhists and all these kind of people that also have interactions in the Utah world. And again, this is the thing, um, folks, whether you agree or disagree with people politically or religiously, it, it, that should be secondary to the fact that we all are image bearers and that we're created in God's image and that we need to honor the dignity of the individual people. And by doing that, we can be more Christ-like in our approach. So even if you disagree with somebody politically or theologically, does not mean that you have to hate them or that you can't talk to them. And I think that's really important that we're seeing people not only talking to each other within the restoration that traditionally weren't, and now we're seeing evangelicals talking to the restoration that traditionally wasn't happening. I do feel that because this is the 200th anniversary, this decade that we entered into is the 200th anniversary of very significant events within the restoration. And I do believe that God has placed us at this moment because of 200 years of all of this, of the evangelical world and restoration, the time has come to do something differently. And one of those places is at the Book of Mormon rally and is with the work of Patrick and Casey Griffiths. Gentlemen, thank you so much for coming on to the program today. Thank, thank you, Steve. You. Appreciate it. Okay, so don't forget, I'll be there the 20th. I'll be at Rob Meldrum's Firm Foundation on Thursday, April 18th. Make sure you get tickets for that. This one is free, so just show up. Uh, bring your Book of Mormon and be prepared to share your favorite Book of Mormon verse because I'm going to ask you what it is when I'm there. Either way, folks, there's going to be links in the description for everything that we talked about, including for this event. Also, for those who would like to financially support the program, we have links there, both on PayPal, Venmo, and Patreon, as well as our merch store, mormonbookreviews.com. And I want to thank everybody who is financially supporting this channel. Could not do it without you. But the most important thing is this. All the voices of the restoration will be heard here on Mormon Book Reviews.